welcome to class today. Today's class is going to be just a general beginner's class. We'll try out some different beginner's poses and we'll take some time at the start for relaxation and some time at the end for relaxation as well. So you might like to grab um, a book or something that you could use similarly. Um, uh, maybe a book, I've got a yoga block, you probably don't, want, don't have one of those, or even just a cushion. So I'm sitting on both, I've got a cushion here and a block. And we might need those throughout class as well. So we're just coming to find a comfortable seated position. So you could come to sitting cross-legged, you could even just come to a more kind of easy, comfy cross-legged seat like this, or you could come to sit on your knees if that was a little bit more comfortable. But we're going to aim to have our hips a little bit higher than our knees, maybe if we can. So that's why we'll sit up on a pillow or on a block and that can help us have just that little bit of extra space. So closing down the eyes when you're ready, we'll bring the hands onto the thighs and we're going to sit up really nice and tall. It's a really nice tall spine, crown of the head's reaching up towards the sky. And just take a moment, make any adjustments that you need to. Crown of, the, crown of the head reaching up towards the sky. Relax the shoulders, hands on the thighs. Making any adjustments you need to, to make sure that you're comfortable. Relax the shoulders. And relax any tension in the jaw as well. take our focus to our breath. So we're just going to take our focus to the place in the body where we feel like we can connect with the breath the most. So for some of us that's the rise and fall of the belly, for others we're breathing into our chest so the rise and fall of the chest, maybe at the back of your nose where the air becomes your breath, maybe the rise and fall, the slight rise and fall of the shoulders. You decide where in your body you can connect with the feeling of the breath. We'll stay here, sitting up really nice and tall. Just focusing just for a few moments on our breath. Could we notice if our breaths are long or short? If we're breathing quite deeply or if we're breathing shallow breaths. We'll bring one hand onto the chest, one hand onto the belly. And as we inhale, we want our hand on our belly to rise. So we inhale, the belly expands. And as we exhale, the belly contracts slightly. So inhaling into the belly here. So inhaling, moving the hand up. Exhale, allow the hand to come back. So really breathing, focusing on breathing into the belly here. Breathing into the belly. Exhale, the belly falls back in. Inhale, the belly rises. Exhale, falls back in. So as we inhale, the belly expands like a balloon. And then as we exhale, it contracts back in. This is the natural way for us to breathe and a way of breathing that is a lot more relaxing for us as well. So maybe if we're ever feeling stressed, we can take a moment and focus on breathing into the belly. Inhale, belly expands. Exhale, belly contracts. also breathe in and out through the nose here, if that's possible. And we'll try and have nice, long, slow, calm breaths. So 
if you can, making your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. So breathing out a little bit more than you breathe in. So that would kind of look like inhaling and exhaling, nice, long, slow exhale. Inhaling, nice, long, slow exhale. So lots of things to think about here. We're breathing into the belly as best we can. We're breathing in and out through our nose if we can. And then we're trying to have nice, calm, slow breaths. So ideally, we'll stay with this kind of breathing throughout the whole of our yoga class. And if you notice that you've lost it, just come back, remind yourself, oh, breathing into the belly, oh, maybe try and breathe in and out through the nose instead of the mouth. And if you start to feel a little bit short of breath, you can take a little rest and come back to the class any time that you feel like your breaths are quite nice and slow and relaxed again. Okay, wonderful job. We're going to open the eyes, inhale, raise the arms all the way up, take the gaze up towards the ceiling, bring the palms of the hands together, we'll bring them down through centre. And we'll just do a few of these. Inhale, raising the arms up, gaze comes up. Exhale, hands come all the way through center. One more of those. Inhale, raise them up. And we'll exhale, bring them through center. And then we're going to bring our arms out into what I like to call our cactus arms. We're just going to do a couple of little twists. So we'll twist around and look behind us towards our right. And then we'll twist around and look behind us towards our left. And we'll do a few of those behind us towards our left. And if it's a bit uncomfortable with the neck, you don't need to take the gaze behind you. Okay, so our elbows are roughly in line with our shoulders. All right, great job. So if we're sitting on any props, we can pop those towards the back of the mat so they're handy for when we need them. And we're going to come into our first pose of today, which is our child's pose. So knees can either be together or a little bit apart, and then we'll walk our hands forward, all the way forward, and we'll bring our forehead onto the mat. And if the forehead doesn't reach the mat, grab your pillow or grab your book and pop that underneath, and we'll see if we can have our forehead in contact. Okay, so taking a few breaths here, you have two options with the arms. Arms can be out in front, if that feels better for you, or you can take your arms behind you, palms facing up, relax the shoulders. Let's take a few big deep breaths into the belly from here. Allow the hips to feel nice and heavy. Shoulders relaxed. And remember, you can come back to this pose any time that you feel like you need to rest in class. So just come back to child's pose, pose whenever you need it. We'll take our gaze between our hands and we're going to scoop all the way forward onto our belly. So our knees are in contact with the mat. We'll keep our elbows really close to the body and we're going to scoop all the way down. So we're here on our belly. We've got our fingertips underneath the shoulders. We're going to inhale, keep the elbows really close to the body. We'll inhale up into our baby cobra. So just a little lift up here. Remember, you should be able to take your hands off the mat and you should know that you're just holding yourself up just with the strength of your core. So you're pushing the tops of the feet into the mat. Elbows are nice and low. And then we exhale, use our hands and we're going to push ourselves back into a tabletop position. So coming here, we'll bring our hands, fingers spread really nice and wide. We'll have our, our shoulders, um, elbows and wrists all in line with each other. And we'll see if we can have our knees roughly below our hips. We're going to come into our cat cow. We inhale, take the gaze up. Exhale, round the spine, push the spine up towards the ceiling, tuck the chin. We'll follow through with a few of those. Inhale, gaze comes up. Exhale, we'll round the spine, pushing the spine all the way up. Couple more of those, inhaling up. A few more of these. And 
And then we'll take our hands about one hand span in front of where they are now. We'll tuck the toes and we'll push our hips back for our first downward facing dog of class today. So pushing the hips back, we can have quite a big bend in the knees, especially if our, where our legs are feeling quite tight. Fingers are spread really nice and wide. Ears are roughly between the tops of the arms. So we're gonna have that nice big bend in the knees, nice flat back. And then we're gonna raise our left leg, bring that between the hands and we'll drop the back knee. So we're gonna come onto our fingertips here. We want to have some rough alignment with the knee and the ankle. Gaze is just down low at the front of the mat. And so this could be where we stay. Or if we felt that we had a bit more um, balance today, we might bring our hands onto our thigh. And if we're feeling a little bit adventurous, we might raise our arms up, take our gaze all the way up towards the ceiling, could even bring the hands together. See if we can still keep breathing into the belly, nice long slow exhales. And remember you can come back a stage if you feel like you've gone a little bit too far. big deep breath here and then we're going to bring our hands onto the mat either side of that knee and we're going to straight the, straighten the front leg here so straight leg toes of the left foot pulling back so you could have your fingertips on the mat or if you felt like that was a bit too much you could just bring yourself up bring your hands onto your hips could even use the wall for support if you needed it so depending on how you feel today in your legs, it's going to depend on where you would like to stay. If you're going to fold over the leg, we want to keep a relatively straight spine, so not kind of just rounding down. So quite straight, toes drawn back towards the knees. You can even bring your hands onto your shin if you were somewhere in between both of those places. Inhale. And exhale. Okay, we'll come back into our runner's lunge. We'll plant the hands, tuck the toes, step back to downward facing dog. Push the hips back, nice flat back. Inhale, we'll raise the right foot. Bring the right foot between the hands, drop the back knee. Again, three options here, fingertips, thigh, or full shape here with arms either apart or together, hands either apart or together, knee and the ankle roughly in line with each other here. And let's take a few breaths. If you found this a little bit easy, you could walk that left knee back a little bit further so you were getting your stretch on the left side of your hip. Inhale. And a nice long slow exhale. Okay, you'll bring the hands either side of that knee and this time we're straightening the right leg out. So you might have a big difference between both sides of your body. So remember you can have your fingertips on the mat, toes drawn back towards the body. You could have your hands maybe on your calf, on your shin, sorry, or you could have your hands up on your waist or even using the wall to support you. So we're just opening up through the hamstrings here and just take the option that feels quite comfortable for you. We want to feel a bit of stretch, maybe about 60 to 70% of how much our body can stretch. But we don't want to feel pain or like it's really, really difficult and unpleasant. So we just want to make sure we're in a, in a place where it feels quite comfortable. And we'll take a few breaths here. And just coming up to wherever feels most natural on this leg. Okay, then we'll lunge back forward into that front knee and we're going to plant the hands and we're just going to take this right knee back towards the left knee. So knees come together and then we're going to lower ourselves onto our belly again, all the way down. So this time you could ground the feet down and come into your baby cobra, elbows stay really close to the body. Or if you felt like you wanted to come a little bit further, you ground it down through the hands, 
tops of the feet are pushing into the mat. We lift up the body and lift up the thighs from the mat. Gaze comes up towards the ceiling. And then we'll all exhale, tuck the toes, push the hips back. So that was our upward facing dog. So we can give that one a go and see how it works for you and your body. And then we're going to make our way, our feet up towards our hands. So you could hop, step, walk, or jump all the way through. And we're going to come up to our half lift. So nice flat back. Shoulders are drawn back. And then we're going to exhale, fold all the way forward. Let's take hold of opposite elbows and allow the top half of the body to be really heavy and completely let go. So allow the weight of the head, the neck and the shoulders to let go over the legs. You can have a little sway from side to side. If you're quite open in your hamstrings, you might like to slowly start to straighten the legs a little bit. You could sway from side to side. Inhale, raise the arms all the way up. And exhale, hands come back down by the side. We'll come up to the top of our mat and we're going to come into our chair pose. So we're going to raise our arms out and up above us, palms of the hands turned in towards each other. And our feet could either be touching or they could be a little bit further apart, hip width. And then we're going to come back to sit in our imaginary chair. Quite easy, really quite a tough pose sometimes. So we're lowering our sit bones down. I'm going to keep the top half of our body nice and straight, nice and upward, nice and open. So it doesn't matter how far we come down. We could just come down a tiny little bit or we could come down a little bit further as long as our chest is nice and open and our arms are reaching towards the ceiling. Gaze could come up between the hands or maybe down low if you felt like it was a bit uncomfortable on your neck. We'll take one breath here. And then we're going to reach all the way up, up to the tiptoes, reach the arms all the way up. And then depending on how your balance is today, we're going to go again and we're going to stay on our tiptoes if you can. So we're going to come back into our chair pose on our tiptoes. Top half of the body stays really nice and straight. Gaze could come up. And then we're going to exhale, raise all the way back up, staying on the tiptoes if you can. We're going to bring our arms out to the side in a T shape. We're going to turn all the way around towards our right. Try and stay up. Really strong balancing pose here. If you fall out, just come straight back to the middle. And we'll let come through to the center and then round towards the left. Okay, and we'll drop the heels down. So we should still be up here at the front of our mat. And we're going to come into our mountain pose. So bringing our hands down by our sides, palms facing towards the front. We'll relax the shoulders and release any tension in the jaw. Let's take a couple of deep breaths here. Nice, long, slow exhale. Okay, we're going to bring our hands onto our hips and we're going to step our left foot back. But when we step our left foot back, what we want is our hips to stay nice and square towards the front. So we don't want our hips to open up, so I'll show you what I mean. So we can take our left foot back about one leg length and then we can turn that back foot onto about a 45 degree angle. But you see how my hips tried to open towards the side there? That's not what we want. We want our hips to be turned towards the front. So we call them square hips in yoga, so facing towards the front. And if that feels really strange on this back foot, you could come up onto the, onto the ball of the foot here, if that was feeling a bit weird. So you could ground down that back foot, kind of pointing towards the top left hand corner of the room. Hips are nice and square towards the front. And then we'll lunge forward into that front knee knee roughly above the ankle. So this is our warrior one, our Virabhadrasana one. And then we can raise our arms up. 
nice and wide or you could bring the palms attached if that's what felt like you wanted to do today and then this knee is working out towards the little toe as opposed to falling in towards the middle we'll take another nice big deep breath here in our warrior one feeling nice and strong And then we're going to adjust our back foot so we can come into our warrior two. So hips were square and now we want to have our open hips. So we'll take that left foot back a little bit further and then we'll open our hips out towards the side and we'll see if the heel and the arch of our back foot are in line with each other. So that kind of imaginary line. So we've adjusted our posture slightly, raise our arms up for warrior two. We'll lunge forward into that front knee knees roughly above the ankle and our legs can be a little bit further apart now so you can take that back foot back a little bit further. So we'll relax the shoulders, arms reaching out, might check on the back arm, make sure it's up at the same level. Knee is working forward towards the little toe if it can as well, remember. And then the gaze comes over the fingertips. Nice big deep breath here. Nice, long, slow exhale. Okay, hands come onto the hips. We'll step all the way forward towards the other side and then we'll do the other side of the body. So we're gonna step our right foot back for our, for our warrior one. So remember our hips are nice and square towards the front. Our back foot's on about a 45 degree angle or if that feels uncomfortable, up on the ball of the foot. So you can bring your hands onto your hips Find a little bit of awareness here, see how you feel. And then you can lunge forward into that front knee. Knee is roughly above the ankle. And we'll raise the arms up. Nice wide arms, or you could bring the hands to touch and you can take the gaze up towards the ceiling. And if that didn't feel good in the neck, you could just keep the gaze just in the middle of the room. So we'll take a couple of breaths here. Choosing the place where you want to keep your gaze, that's called your drishti in yoga, the, your gaze. We'll take our gaze up towards the ceiling, if that's comfortable with our neck. Let's take one more deep breath here, into the belly out. Into the belly out, through the nose. Let's take one more deep breath here. Breathing into the belly, nice, long, slow exhale. Hands come onto the hips and we'll open our hips out this time. Back foot comes back a little bit further. Toes are still turned in a little bit and we're going to lunge forward into that front knee. Our hips are open towards the side now, into our warrior two. Raise the arms, gaze comes over the front fingertips. Inhale into the belly, nice long slow exhale. Might check on that back arm, our drishti, our gaze is over our front fingertips. Check on this knee, make sure it's coming out towards the little toe. Relax the shoulders, lots to think about, really strong pose. See if you can feel quite nice and strong and confident here. Okay, great job. We're going to come into the center, so we're going to turn our left toes in so that both of the outside edges of our feet are parallel with the outside edges of the mat, toes pointing towards the side. And we'll see if our toes could be a little bit further in than our heels. We're going to bring our hands onto our hips and we're going to lower ourselves down so that our fingertips come in contact with the floor. If we need a little bit more space, we could put our book or our cushion underneath so that we could reach. So left fingertips come into the middle, directly below the head, and then we're gonna raise our right arm up to the ceiling, take our gaze up with it if that's comfortable for the body. You could even bring that hand onto the low back if that felt a bit more appropriate in your body today. Okay, one more breath here. We'll swap over sides, right hand comes into the middle, Left hand either raises up, gaze can come up towards the ceiling. If that's uncomfortable on the neck, keep the gaze down low. And if it's uncomfortable on the hand, bring the hand onto the low back. Take a nice big deep breath here. And we'll bring both hands onto the floor. 
And you could just stay up here on your fingertips, nice flat back. That might be challenging enough if you've got quite tight hamstrings, if you've been doing a lot of exercise, or you could bring the palms of your hands onto the floor and slowly allow your body, the top of your head to work its way towards the floor. Take some nice deep breaths here, in through the nose, out through the nose. Allowing the top half of the body to completely relax here. And if you've come down a little further, you could even bring your fingertips in line with the toes. And allow the crown of the head to come closer to the mat. We'll bring our hands underneath our shoulders up to our nice flat back, bring our hands onto our hips and we'll use the strength of our body to bring us all the way up and then we'll step all the way back forward towards the front of the mat. Inhale, raise the arms all the way up. Exhale, folding forward all the way into our Uttanasana, our forward fold, our torso and our body, our torso and our thighs are touching. Inhale up to a half lift, exhale plant the hands, we'll step both of our feet back into our downward facing dog, pushing the hips back, remember if you need a break at any time just take one, pushing the hips back, nice straight arms and then we'll drop the knees, we'll bring the knees out as wide as the mat, We'll walk ourselves forward into our Downward Facing Warrior, our Adha Mukha Varasana. Allow the hips to be nice and heavy here. And then we'll walk our hands all the way over towards the left so we get a nice big stretch in the right hand side of the body. Take a nice big deep breath here. Nice, long, slow exhale. We'll take a few more breaths here, coming down to the cool down part of the class. See if we can relax, have some nice, long, slow, relaxed breaths. Walk our hands back towards the center, over towards the right. Nice big stretch in the left hand side of the body. See if we can breathe into the area where we feel that stretch. Take a few big deep breaths here. Try and relax. Close down the eyes if you feel comfortable. Walk our hands back towards the centre, gaze comes between the hands and we're going to scoop forward onto the belly and then come down to laying flat. We'll just take a moment here, we're going to bring our hands onto the mat, we'll pop our head down and we'll just take a moment, maybe have a wiggle from side to side with the hips, we'll just check in with the low back, make sure that everything's feeling okay. This is supposed to be a, a practice of kindness, our yoga practice. So we'll just take, a, take notice if anything we do doesn't work for our body or hurts us. And then we can modify the practice and, and do the things that make us feel the best. So we'll bring our forehead onto the mat now. Hands down by the sides, palms facing down. I'm going to inhale. And as we inhale, we're going to lift up the thighs and the chest, reaching the toes back, the fingers back. So it's not about how high we get off the mat, it's about how long we feel. So imagine there's a, a string pulling from the crown of your head, your toes are reaching back, 
You don't want your feet any wider than your hips. And we'll stay here for a couple of breaths if we can. Nice big deep breath. And then we're going to exhale all the way down. We're going to bring our hands out in front of us this time. We'll take another breath here. In through the nose, out through the nose. And then when we're ready, we're going to take our forehead back onto the mat. Arms out in front, palms facing down. And we're going to inhale and we're going to reach forward, lift our thighs off the mat, lift our chest. Nice big stretch, nice big reach. As far as you can, toes stretching back. This is our locust pose. And then we're exhale, lowering the body all the way down. Again, we'll bring our hands, our forehead onto our, onto our forearms. Take a little rest. Take a couple of breaths here. And then we're going to bring our hands underneath our shoulders and we're going to push ourselves up onto our knees. And we'll grab our pillow or our block and we're just going to take a quick, comfortable seat just for a little easy twist. So coming onto your prop if you have one, cross-legged, or you can stay up on your knees, that's completely fine. But inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, right hand comes onto left thigh, left hand comes onto lower back, gaze comes behind us. Let's take a nice big breath here. As we inhale, we might elongate the spine, lengthen up through the spine. As we exhale, we might take our gaze around a little bit further, coming further into the twist. You can always back out a little bit if you've gone a little bit too far. And if it's a bit too uncomfortable on the neck, just keep the gaze just to the side or even keep the gaze to the front, whichever feels best in your body today. Take a few more deep breaths here. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, left hand comes onto right thigh, right hand comes onto low back. But inhale, nice long straight spine, exhale, gaze comes behind us to the wall behind us. Maybe inhaling further and twisting even further if that's comfortable, if there's space in the body. Remember, all of our bodies are completely different and the thing that is most beneficial for somebody else's body might not be most beneficial for yours. So sometimes we need to come to the place and that feels best for us. Just listen to our own body listen to the wisdom of our body and if, it if we have any sharp or painful sensations then we know we've definitely come too far or we know that pose might not even be good for us. We'll take one more breath here. Nice long slow exhale. Raise our arms back to the center and then we're going to come into just a, look, a simple forward fold. So we have our legs crossed and whichever way we have our legs crossed, we'll have one leg in front. So we'll swap sides. So at the moment I have my left leg in front, you could bring your left leg in front too, as long as you swap sides on the other side. So we're gonna bring our hands out in front and we're just gonna slowly walk our hands forward. We're gonna keep the spine really nice and straight. So we might actually just come to here and realize that we get a nice, quite a good stretch here. And the most important thing is that when our sit bones, when our bum starts to lift off the mat or off the prop, then we've probably come a little bit too far. So you might like to walk the hands a little bit further. And if your sit bones stay in contact with the mat, that's fine. And we'll have a nice straight spine. So we're not tucking the chin. We're keeping the gaze just between the hands. And just depending on how our hips are today, it might depend on how far we can come down. Remember, different days, different way we feel on a different day can change the pose completely. So let's just try and accept where our body is today. You know, yoga is a practice of kind of accepting ourselves as opposed to just trying to improve things. You might come down a little further as we're here for a few more breaths, but maybe just closing the eyes down. Gaze stays down low on the floor. It's 
focusing on the breath. It was very uncomfortable to have your arms straight. You could also come onto your forearms. Gaze still stays just down in front of you. Okay, and then we'll walk ourselves back towards our body and we'll swap over the cross of our legs. So we'll take our right leg in front this time and we'll take our left leg behind. And so we'll walk our hands forward. Again, both sides of the body might be quite different. So depending on how tight the hips are on each side, this might feel a little bit different on this side. But just finding a place where you can lower the body down a little bit. Nice straight spine. You might not come down very far. So for me on this side, it's a little bit more difficult. So I might step a little bit further. And remember when your sit bones start to lift up off the mat, that's when maybe we've come too far. Remember you can always come down onto your forearms also. Gaze stays on the floor. Nice long slow inhale and exhale. So this is called the fire log pose and it's really good for opening the outsides of the hips. And it's a forward fold, so nice and calming and relaxing. We always want to make sure we keep quite a nice straight spine usually in these forward folds. Focus on having nice good posture. Okay, and then we'll walk our hands back towards the body and we're going to come to lay flat on the mat for our Shavasana, our final resting pose. So really simple this one, we come to lay flat on the back, arms down by the sides and we allow our whole body to relax. So the feet are about as wide as the hips or a little wider and we'll allow the feet to completely relax. Our arms are down by our sides a little bit of space between us and the body and really you can take up as much space as you like here. Palms are facing up towards the ceiling to allow our shoulders to be open slightly, our chest to be open. And we relax the shoulders. Our head is relaxed. We might tuck the chin a little bit slightly or pop a little blanket under our head if we feel like our head's really tilted too far back. This final pose, our resting pose, what we want to do is just completely let go. Allowing the whole body to feel heavy and relaxed. Nothing to do, nowhere to go, nobody you need to be right now. Just be here and we just allow the yoga practice to have some time to settle in and allow ourselves a moment just to rest without trying to do anything at all. You don't need to try and meditate or try and breathe or try and concentrate on the body in any specific way right now. I just want you to try and allow the body to relax. See if you can simply let go. Notice if there's any tension in the shoulders still, allow them to relax. Notice 
Notice if there's any tension in the jaw, completely relax the jaw. Let the whole body relax. Stay here for as long as you liked. If you felt like you needed a little bit further, you could pause the video, stay here for a little longer. Otherwise, we're going to wiggle our fingers and our toes and we're going to take hold of the back of our thighs. Take hold of our hands or the thighs and we're going to draw our forehead up towards our knees. Squeeze in towards a ball. Really squeeze, 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 and we're going to let go. We'll bring our feet about as wide as the mat or, you know, just wider than hip width. And we'll allow our knees to fall from side to side, our windscreen wiper knees. Just allowing them to fall either side, nice and slowly. Okay, wonderful. And then when we're ready, you can make your way up to a seat in any way that you like. You could rock and roll up. You could use your hand to support you at the side. So we'll just come with our eyes closed to a comfortable seat. Nice, easy cross-legged. We'll inhale, raise our arms up, keeping our eyes closed if we can. Exhale, bring our hands through centre. We'll do two more of those. Inhale, raise the arms up. Exhale, palms come through center one more time. Inhale, raise the arms up. And this time we'll bring the hands to our heart center. This is our prayer position or Anjali Mudra in yoga. And you can join me if you like by bowing your head and saying Namaste. Thank you for class everyone today. I hope that you enjoyed that class and Enjoy the rest of your day as well. If you had any questions for me, please pop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like the video, and feel free to share it with any of your friends who you think might benefit as well. Okay, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.